What does it mean to be black when you don't know your history? And how can you be African if you can't trace your roots? Because if we don't have a sense of origin, history, and cultural background, we are most likely to become entities that lack substance and proper foundation, making it easier for the African society to be indoctrinated with certain false foreign ideology, which are passed down from one generation to the other, creating a cycle of inferiority towards the Europeans. And one of those ideology are ideas like Mungo Park discovered River Niger and Lagos is no man's land. The latter is the topic of discussion in this video. Well, join me in this video as we break down and take a deep dive into the true origin of Lagos in detail. In this video, we'll be finding out if Lagos is truly a no man's land, why it's actually called a no man's land, and the first settlers of what is known as Lagos. So please, if you not like this video, like this video and subscribe. If you not like this video, like this video and subscribe. Like the video and subscribe. Like the video and subscribe because like it won't hurt if you do, but it actually hurts me if you don't. So please, like I said earlier, like this video and subscribe. And let's get right into the video. Just so you know, this is the first installation of my docu-series which is the origin of Lagos and this video is strictly going to just only emphasize on the first settlers. Well, in my next video, we'll be discussing the timeline of Lagos before independence. So, like I said earlier before, please if you've not liked this video, like the video and subscribe. If you've not liked the video, like the video and subscribe because it doesn't hurt you if you do, but it actually hurts me if you don't. So, like I said, like this video and subscribe and let's get right into the video. Before the Portuguese came in contact with Lagos around 1472, there was already a well-organized settlement inhabiting Lagos and they were the Arogis and some larger settlement. And despite the history book trying to erase the larger roots in Lagos, it must still be said regardless. The main reason why the Ilages or the Ilages people are usually not recognized as one of the first settlers of Lagos is simply because of their nomadic fishing lifestyle, meaning they didn't settle in a place for so long but were always on the coast and didn't indulge themselves in acquiring land or, ha or having a monarchical structure or system. They were just fishermen who occasionally stayed at the coast Unlike their counterparts, the Aorogis, whose culture wasn't nomadic, as their descendants claim ownership of Lagos to this very day. The actual date of the Aorogis settling in Lagos is really unclear, but is speculated to be within the 14th to 15th century. And it is said that the Aorogis originally migrated from Isheri along the Ogun River as a result of tribal conflict within the Yoruba hinterland, settling at Ido Island and Epitemeta in Lagos. The Ola of your leader who brought the Awogis and settled the Awogis at the Ido Island and the Putameta environment was known as Ugufumire or Agodare and had about 32 children, most of whom went on to create visible settlements which is still being inhabited in Lagos to this very day. Most of the notable children that went on to create settlements for themselves were the likes of Oniru who settled in what is known as modern day Victoria Island, Elegushi who settled in what is known as the modern day Lekri Peninsula, Oni Ikoi of Ikoi, Oni Siwo, Olumegbon, Oni Tolu, Aromire, amongst others. After the Aori settled world in Lagos for over a period of time and traded with various groups like the growing Bini Empire in the east and the Fon people in the Dahomey region in the west, the Aori fell under the domain of the Oba of Bini in the 16th century. Now this is how it happened. You see, as far as I'm concerned, there is no historical record of a battle between the Bini Empire and the Awori people or the Awori settlers in Lagos. But based on some oral history and tradition, it is said that there was a certain misunderstanding between various Bini merchants trading in Lagos or trading with the Awori people 
in Lagos as of the time and there was always constant mi- disagreement between the Bini merchants and the Awogi people, notably a female merchant named Aina as of the time. Now based on the tussle between the Bini merchant and the Awogis, the Oba of Bini as of the time, Oba Oroba, had to send this war chief Aseru to intervene in the crisis. Well, the Awogis welcomed Aseru to be their leader, but he died on his way back to Bini, and Ashikpa, who was a member of the expedition, was ordered by the Oba of Bini to fill the role of Aseru. Now, Ashikpa's son, Prince Adu, went on to be the first Oba of Lagos and moved from Ido to Lagos Island, which became the seat of power of Lagos to this very day, as Prince Adu's descendants are still ruling Lagos to this very day. In summary, we could say that the Awogis were the first inhabitants of Lagos, while the Oba of Lagos can trace their lineage to the Bini Kingdom or the Oba of Bini. And that simply shows or it simply represents the Bini conquest of Lagos. Well, in conclusion, this is just a simplified story of the first inhabitants of Lagos and their story. But in my next video, I will explain in detail every historical event in a timeline fashion from the 15th century down to the 1st of October 1960. So please, if you've not subscribed or if you've not liked this video, please like this video and subscribe and stay tuned to the, for the next video because it's going to be a bomb. So please, if you've not liked the video, like the video and subscribe because it won't hurt you if you do, but it'll actually hurt me if you don't. So like I said, like the video and subscribe, like the video and subscribe and see you in the next video.